Warning, you're about to watch a video on a Morse code paddle from a guy who doesn't do Morse code. But I'm learning, right? So be gentle on me. What's up, everyone? I uh, just want to do a quick video on this little tiny key. Guys, I do a lot of sideband activity. Guys, a little known secret about me. I have an infatuation with Morse code paddles. Uh, I have a few. <laughs> See what I mean? I'm starting to develop a problem. And I don't even do Morris code yet, but it is uh, on my short list of things to do. I'm learning. So uh, I saw this first on Thomas Witherspoon's channel. He was using this a few weeks ago. And then uh, Charlie Red Summit RF just did a video on this last week. So I instantly hopped on n6ara.com, link in the description, and ordered one of these. So the idea behind this, he wanted just a little portable key that would just plug right into your radio. So you would key just like this. And I think uh, this is a great solution. I mean, just it's just a tiny little key. You plug it right into your radio when you're on the air. So if you're out in the field, you get up to the top of a mountain, which I've seen some people do in their videos, and you don't have your key. Well, something like this that's this tiny can just always be in your bag. They're so super light and affordable. You could buy a couple of these and, uh, you know, just kind of always have them with you in your, in your ready bag or your go bag or whatever you call it, your radio bag and uh, not have to worry. Because if I hiked up to a mountain or even if I drove 10 miles down the street to a park and uh, you forget something, that kind of sucks. And you gotta go home or you gotta hike back down the mountain. You hike back down the mountain, you're probably not coming back up again. $15 for the kit version that we're gonna build today. $20 for the pre-assembled version. Now guys, very important. This is not a main CW key. This is a backup key, okay? So don't go crying to me or anyone else uh, expecting Fantastic results like you would some $150, $200 key, okay? This is $15. Let's dive in and uh, get on to building this thing. Let's open it up, let's open it up. What do we get? What do we get? It looks like a, like a mad scientist kit. This is awesome. I didn't know we'd get our uh, handsome travel case as well, so. I'm so excited. I mean, this is gonna be stupid easy to put together, I hope. Oh, cool. It does come with the little 3D printed uh, guys for the, so like this is this is the key right here. And then the 3D printed jobby clicks on like that. Oh, that's awesome. That's so awesome. I will probably have to like epoxy those there. But uh, basically it's just a little circuit board, a little tip ring sleeve jobby there. That solders and then you solder these guys here and that's what makes your connection so whoops and then drop everything yeah there it is n6 ara tiny paddle this is the dit and this is the da i mean it doesn't really get any more simple than that right that's awesome and what is this oh super glue okay cool so that is for uh putting the little 3D printed guys on there. So awesome. I am so, so, so excited for this little guy. This is so tiny. Like that's how you'll be king. Look at that. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> All right, let's start melting stuff. So before we get started, there are some really good instructions for this online that uh, he has made. So we're gonna follow those. I just put everything in this little jar here so stuff doesn't uh, get lost, but we're gonna need some tweezers, some Q-tips, uh, some solder, this is some Kester, Keister, whatever. This is just the liquid solder that I use because I like it. And I've got some alcohol in here and a hot iron. And that is uh, all we need for now. So step one, we're gonna place the board dit side up as I have done here. And we're simply going to give it a good bath here with some alcohol and a Q-tip here just to clean off the board. Let that dry for a second. Then we're going to apply a healthy amount of flux to the pad closest to the dit label. That would be this guy right here. There we are. Now we want to apply enough solder to cover this entire board here. So let's do that. Oh, that looks good. Oh, that looks good. Oh my gosh. Can you see how shiny and delicious that looks? That is a good solder right there, boys and girls. I love a good solder. Then we sit here and we let this cool, and then we're gonna add more flux. All right, it's cooled. Put a little more flux on here. And then, 
and lay the paddle on thusly. And we want to make sure that it's aligned properly to this paddle here because that's the contact. We can always reheat this and, and rework this if this uh, gets out of whack. But let's try putting a little heat on it. Hmm. That's gonna work. I have no idea. Let's just go in. There it goes. Actually worked pretty good. So I screwed it up. Well, hopefully the next side will be better. Actually, that doesn't look bad at all. His probably looks better. Yeah, his looks way better. I used too much solder. That's okay. I don't mind it. That is solder. His doesn't show on his instructions, doesn't show having any solder on top. It just kind of sits in it, but that's okay. It's a connection, hopefully. Let's see how bad we can do on the other side now. Well, that wasn't uh, as good as I wanted, but it wasn't bad. Now let's get a little flux on here again. This one will maybe be better, hopefully. So I was reading the instructions. It said apply when I was putting that other key part on. Um, apply heat to the pad and not to the key part itself. So we'll try that this time around. So this should just kind of sink into here without having the solder on top is how he's explaining how to do it. And he said do a little more flux there. Set her on. Pad. Helping hands would probably be. I don't I don't know if they would help in this case or not, actually. Let's see what kind of damage we can do on this now. Apply the heat to the pad and then just kind of let it fall in there, he's saying. There we are, okay. Let's see. Hmm. Well, that's not working for me, so. I turned the heat down a little bit. It was at 750, now it's at 650, so. Maybe a little bit hotter. Eh, that seems to be working. Trying to do a better job, but this isn't happening. See, that's the sign of a bad solder right there. Dexterity is not my thing, so we're just gonna we're just gonna brute force it. KMRD way. Man, this is a pain in the butt on the other side. I definitely should have ordered this pre-assembled. <laughs> oh, that's I'm embarrassed at that. That's horrific. There we are. That might work. That looks that looks not terrible. So now we're going to mess with this guy and with the writing face up, we're gonna stick that in. We're gonna flip it over and we're just gonna solder the center pin. This wants to kind of rock out of here. I think this calls for a job for helping hands. They want us to solder this center pin first. Boy, no pressure on that, huh? That should do. And here's the dumb thing I'm gonna do is take it out and inspect it and make sure. Oh yeah, that looks good. You wanna just make sure that it's kind of aligned properly before you start rocking the other ones in place, but I'm actually uh, quite pleased with that, so. Who'd have thunk? I did it on the first try. Let's rock these guys real quick. And that should take care of that part. Next, it says to get a pair of needle nose pliers and we're actually going to bend it from this part here. He's calling it a Z part. We're gonna try and grab it there and just ever so slightly bend it up, which actually this one already feels like it might be. So actually, I'm just gonna do it on this one. Let's give this guy a shot here, just, just a touch there. 
They're not touching. Now we can test it on our radio and then we'll put the little keypad cover things on. Put this little guy in. Oh, 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 that's a good sign. Here's the problem with the 705. It wants to just sit there. That's pretty neat. I think my dip might be a little hard. I don't know how you bend this back though once you bend them out. I don't know, I'm gonna leave it. Now for the part that I'm dreading. We gotta use the super glue. Well, he says do it with the dit side up first. So we'll do that. So we gotta put the dit cover on first. So there, dit. So we're gonna take this super glue here and I'm just gonna try to apply a tiny little drop here, which I am not capable of doing though. So good thing I did that off camera. Oh, sweet, there's nothing in here. There we are. Little dollop. And we're gonna slide it on here and just give it some pressure for 30 seconds or so. All right. Paddle number one is done. And we'll do the same. Oh, I don't want that much glue. Just a little dab will do ya, I reckon. Slide it on and press for 30 seconds. Huzzah! In all its key and glory. That's pretty neat. So here it is on the X5105, really more how this is intended to use. See, it's missing some of those dits. Still gotta adjust this a little bit. Like, I don't know how much more I can really fiddle with this. You just gotta kind of... So this is pretty neat. I mean, when you're done with it, take it out and uh, you get your little vial out and you store it. That is freaking awesome. Let's get a Bofang for scale. I mean, the vial alone is not much bigger than the, the screen. I mean, there's the whole, there's the whole key. Almost fits on the screen of a Bofang. That is too cool for school. I like that. And to compare, here is my CW Morse paddle for size. So <laughs> that is that is tiny. But man, if this had a female, a female connector, then you could just imagine that and imagine just being able to sit here and do this. That would be the only thing I would change on this. This is too cool. I love it. So overall, what do I think of this tiny little paddle? Well, I think it's a fantastic bit of kit. I absolutely love this from the second I saw this on Thomas Witherspoon's video and then on Charlie Red Summit RF's video. Uh, I knew I had to have it. 15 bucks for a little project like this. I mean, just because it's a project alone kind of makes it fif worth 15 bucks. But uh, now you get a little CW canvas, so that's awesome. Like I said earlier, the only thing I'd love to see change is make this a female or give us two options so then we can buy two for twice the price. Aha, see, capitalism. I, I think this would be really cool if it were female. And you just sit there, tell your friends, like, yeah, huh, what's, oh, sorry, what's that? I was in the middle of a QSO, didn't hear you there. Ha <laughs> ha! But uh, yeah, I absolutely love this thing. There is a uh, little case you can 3D print for this. I think it's on Thingiverse. I'll put a link in the description if I can find the uh, file for it, but yeah. Cute little CW key. Very limited run. I'm sure if you all rush out to buy them, they won't be available. Uh, this is kind of just a little kit that he builds from my understanding. So expect to wait. But look at this. It's just Here's a little vial of CW right there. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. And that's all I got. Thanks so much for everyone watching. I, I really appreciate it. I love doing these little builds uh, and, and videos. So I hope you enjoy it. And uh, go flood them with orders, guys. 15 bucks for the one you got to make and 20 bucks for a pre-assembled one. In hindsight, because of my lack of dexterity, I probably would have just bought the pre-assembled one. But it was a fun little kit to build nonetheless. So anyway, thanks so much, guys. We'll see you again in another episode of K&M Radio Stuff. 73, guys.